So many of you watched my video where I talked about how the so-called claim that Xbox console is dead because it doesn't have as much, uh, you know, in terms of sales or because Xbox is not keeping all of its games exclusive to the Xbox platform is simply nonsense where I made that, you know, I made the video showing that that particular claim is just out the wazoo simply because you can't say one competitor has a bigger market share in an area. Hence, the other competitor just needs to walk away because for some reason, gamers, when they're talking about this Xbox and PlayStation thing, they want to negate the real world. I also then used an example. I used Chick-fil-A and Popeye's as Chick-fil-A holds the larger market share in the chicken sandwich business, the chicken restaurant business. While Popeye's is a, you know, one of the runner ups, but not as high as Chick-fil-A. In fact, a very significantly small share. Chick-fil-A is sitting at 40 something percent. Popeye is sitting at 11 percent. However, Popeye's is still pumping out its chicken, doing its thing. Popeye's is not going to pack up shop and go away if their business remains profitable for them. So I made this particular comparison and, you know, I guess it was interesting. Now, some people said, well, how about the exclusivity side where you don't see Chick-fil-A selling his sandwiches at a Popeye or Popeye selling his sandwiches at a Chick-fil-A? And I wanted to go ahead and address that because the very interesting aspect. Now, we use both businesses in terms of market share. However, this is where the difference between the business models kind of shows up. In terms of software, you know, it's very ubiquitous to be able to get software across the board, provide services, and do things regardless of your platform. Whereas a chicken sandwich doesn't have that much flexibility simply because, you know, a chicken sandwich, you have a recipe that is more than likely not going to be cracked very easily. However, your software can be easily cracked. You could, you know, people could take a look at it and develop an open source version of your software. <laughs> it's actually that simple. They will not use the exact same code, but they can see the way things are executed. And before you know what's going on, you have a competitor that's actually a bunch of MIT kids when it comes down to it. However, though, for those who still maintain that exclusivity somehow is going to defend, you know, destroy a brand. I have a question for you. How come when it comes down to one of Microsoft's biggest revenue areas, it is an item, a software piece that is available elsewhere? Microsoft revenue, according to this breakdown here on uh, Hemel Frank, uh, Frank, I think uh, it says Microsoft revenue was $198 billion in 2022, up 30 percent, uh, 30 billion dollars, which is 18 percent from a year earlier. When we do a breakdown by product streams, the largest source of Microsoft revenue was Office with $44.9 billion, 23 percent of the total. Just behind the second place was Azure with $44 billion of revenue, 22 percent uh, you know, of the total. Microsoft is exception is an ability of keeping a big chunk of that revenue as operating income and profit from 198 billion of revenue. Microsoft was left with 84 billion of operating income from that 72 billion was Microsoft's net income after taxes. So somewhere, somehow Microsoft is making a lot of money without exclusivity of its software being solely based to windows platforms because it's everywhere. You can get it over the cloud. <laughs> oh my gosh. For my hardcore Xbox exclusivist, I don't think you really do understand the ramifications if Microsoft and Xbox dare to go back to the old school way of doing business. You see, what's going on is actually companies are making slight modifications to their business strategy because of the market. They're no longer comfortable in the little bubble that they were before. Case in point, and I've actually made this video, I, I made a video like this a while ago where I said Nintendo's days are numbered being, multi, being you know, uh, cl closed down to one ecosystem because they will not be able to achieve growth in today's advancing technological market. Animal Crossing Pocket Camp Complete paid offline version releases on mobile December 3rd. The launch price is $9.99 until January 31st, and then the regular price is Nineteen ninety nine after January thirty first, they are releasing it on two other mobile platforms. Nintendo is no longer a traditional first party, you know, publisher. They are now a third party publisher. They've been for a while, by the way. I just did not want to point out those, you know, videos like I did a long time ago. So all this talk about Nintendo being sitting pretty and whatever, they already have a pocket direct dimension to be able to make more money, which is the mobile camp which is a bigger player base than PlayStation and a bigger player play base than Xbox and even a bigger player base than PC. So Nintendo basically is looking at the market and saying, man, we need to take our games out there because they got games that can run on low powered hardware. The iPhones and the new phones right now are OP. 
So if anybody is not modifying its own, you know, ecosystem and a platform to actually do more and reach other gamers, you will be sitting with a burn on your bank account like PlayStation had been for a while until it moved itself to the PC platform. All those sales of Uncharted and all those sales of Horizon Zero Dawn, you know how many of them were, you know, were, were copies sold on a sale? Because most of them, I can, I mean, we can always tell you that most of those particular copies were not sold at full price. It's not like Mario and all the others where, you know, Nintendo will clock a bunch of them at full price and then over the time sell like, you know, five times more. Whereas PlayStation is barely able to pull off something like that because a lot of its players are literally sitting on Call of Duty. I just made the video just pointing out that, you know, Bobby Kotick, when he threatened uh, Xbox that they were possibly going to take, uh, you know, Call of Duty off of Xbox, it basically stated that PlayStation and PC could keep Call of Duty. So PlayStation players are literally knee deep in Call of Duty so much that they really got to. <laughs> PlayStation had to find a way to pretty much go multi-plat with their own their own IP because their own platform could not support it anymore. Nintendo is feeling the market stress where seventy dollar games don't necessarily are you know are, not, are no longer seeming appealing for players. It's the only it, it's the it's the what do I call it? it's a flashpoint that Nintendo basically is afraid of happening, which is already somewhere happening. And then they took the game and they're pricing it at twenty dollars on a mobile store. I guess the market will you know. Help them realize what's going to happen. This is just an introductory price. They're trying to get people to kind of, you know, FOMO so they don't miss out and buy Animal Crossing. It's a FOMO deal. Oh, look at this. Spawnyard said it. So let's grab it at $9.99 then. Or do you think this is a FOMO deal? That's crazy. It's nice to see it available after being shut down. But no one's going to pay 20 bucks after January 30, uh, 31st. Well, let the market decide. Let Nintendo go out there and learn. They think this is. They think the mobile market... Is as uh, is their own ecosystem where they can sell their games for 50 60 bucks without much competition in that you know area the mobile market is different so we're gonna see how it squeezes Nintendo I'm telling you Nintendo is gonna change they're gonna switch up this pff, pun intended so fast you guys are not going to re you guys are not gonna recognize Nintendo very soon watch out and see so to those who are you know championing or wanting to champion exclusives and think that somehow taking your game to another platform means you're you're dead I got to say to you, you can't use that qualifier, please, because that qualifier would also sit with PlayStation as well. So you're making a claim on Xbox that is not based in reality. Plus, if you're looking at it from a business perspective, there is incentive to take some of your software and some of your services to other places. It's that simple. Now, there are some services and software that can stay with Xbox, not saying like that, you know, like the Xbox Xbox itself. Its pipeline is heavily controlled by Microsoft. They have not, you know pretty much pawned it out and said, all right, Dale, make an Xbox, uh, HP, make an Xbox, uh, you know, or every other person. I mean, there's still some things that will stay within the ecosystem. But again, as, a, as somebody who wants to champion exclusivity, I recommend that you, you know, you look at a bigger picture at the end of the day. So thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate you all so much. Talk to me in the comment section. Hopefully we'll talk pretty soon in another one. Peace out.